Hi everyone, um, I've just finished the installation of these batteries in the Roadster. Um, the last video was about deciding where to put them, um, just the details about the batteries themselves. But this one is more about the building of this frame and a bit more detail really about various other components uh, and the connections on the front. So um, yeah, if you want to find out more about that then please watch the rest of the video. So this is the frame just welded up. Um, what I've done is I've picked up on the bulkhead of the Smart uh, with this angle iron and picked up on some existing holes that uh, mount a few components. These aren't really used, these are for fixing cable clips I think, um, but I'm going to put some inserts into the panel and put some screws in there. And on the front now I've picked up on the cross member across the front there are four holes that mount that, so I'm just using two, but it will sit on the... Um, on the main structure of the car. So really it's sitting on an edge here and some edges under here. I'll show you those in a minute. Um, then I've created just four vertical strips. I realised I need to make them wider at the top and they can go narrower further down because um, so on, on this unit which is the frame I've got for the uh, Nissan Leaf batteries or Fluence batteries which I'll really look at it. This is the Fluence holder. Uh, slightly shortened from the pack of I think it's 16 um, so I've shortened it down to a pack of 12 as described earlier really um, just by cutting those but of course so that goes in there drops in there like that but of course I've got tie rods that tie this pack together when the battery is actually in place so I needed to allow room the threaded rods and the uh, nuts at the end uh, to compress that pack so that this could slide down so I nearly didn't do that and then I realized at the end that I needed to so I just bent these out and made this a bit wider which just about picked up on or just about missed these two holes so that's ready to go in really so next thing is to put it in the car Okay, that's, so that's the stack. Um, now I thought I was going to put these threaded rods through and tension the pack up first, but actually there's enough um, slot in these um, bars to enable me to actually just put those in and then get those bolts in at the bottom, which I think enable me to turn the pack over and add it more. easily to the uh, stack. I just need to turn this whole lot around now and get it onto the other side, which will be more interesting. just about going those slots so that is much more compressed than I thought it would be I guess the weight of the batteries is just compressing itself really back one in so those rods don't do as much as I thought they were going to do right so I've made the additions to the frame now um, so I've taken out the battery um, and tried a position a few of the other things. So the other things I need to include are the fuse. Um, now I think the fuse is best actually mounted to the front of the battery pack. So I'll have a bracket on the front of the battery pack which I'll show in a minute. The other thing is the main shut off switch. 
Um, the other thing I need to get somewhere in the front here, I was going to put it in the back, but I think it's probably best in the front, is the vacuum pump. Because I obviously don't get any vacuum from the uh, petrol engine now. So I've got this pump, which is a Mercedes vacuum pump. It's very apt, considering it's a smart. And the other thing is this thing here, which I've made from an old CO2 gas bottle from a MIG welder. So I tend to hang on to these in case the metal is useful. But this one is going to make a great um, cylinder so that when the vacuum pump drawing vacuum, I'm storing some of that vacuum in there. So I've got a bit of a, a reservoir, if you like, of vacuum. So I just need to get a fitting. Now obviously I've made very sure this was empty before I did anything with it. Um, you've got a little release valve on the top there. Um, and then I've drilled that out to make the hole as big as possible and then I'll just need to get an eighth uh, PSP fitting on it. Unfortunately there's a bit inside it which is quite irritating which at some point I'll try and get out. Um, so in drilling this out obviously the, the pin has, has dropped inside. But anyway so I've made some mounts for that so that fits into a small grommet on the back as a pin and then The butt. Two bolt holes on the front so I can just put some nuts on there. So that hang in there using that space. The normal 12 volt battery goes in there and I'll probably just get a smaller 12 volt battery um, to replace this and take off the starter cable that I don't need. So the vacuum pump, I've made some bracket on this frame and mounted it on the side. So that will fit over there, so the pipe will just go to the vacuum cylinder on the uh, brakes and to the reservoir. So I just need a T-piece in there somewhere. And then this is the start switch, that just mounts on the side over here. And that will give me the main start shut off switch on the side there. So as I say, the battery pack will go in, there will be a fuse mounted on the front of the pack and then that fuse will connect to here. So the other thought I had was I'm going to have all this air, well potential airflow still coming through this radiator which I haven't yet taken out. So that's all going to go onto the battery which, so what I've done is added some brackets on here, just some uh, bolts welded underneath. That gives me a potential to put a plate on there. So I can cover that all with a plate, perhaps a fold across the front edge just to stiffen it and that will protect, that will get all that airflow that's coming through just to dive back down. But of course in reality I'll probably take all this out and block up the vent in the front because there's really no point in it being there. Um, but anyway, so this would, this would be a bit of a protector plate really for the front of the battery um, stuff. Um, yeah, so next job is to get this painted up. Now I still started to build up this plate, um, or this, this cover piece and the, and the plates. Um, of course normally it would extend over but I haven't got that piece at the end it's obviously got broken off before I got it. Um, so these are the bits that go in there, these are, look like painted copper um, which makes a lot of sense. The bolts of course are steel, not stainless steel because stainless steel isn't as conductive as normal steel or plated steel. So, But I will use the, the, um, the small stud and nut idea, the grub screw and nut idea, um, which will just take the twisting load off of these bolts. So now I was going to put all this on with all the BMS cables, but because I haven't sorted out this socket, I don't even know whether I'm going to use this socket because it's a slightly unusual one. Um, if I wire all this up, of course, I'll end up cutting the cables, putting them in a different socket. That's going to be really dangerous because I'm going to end up with this all shorting out when I actually pair the cables back. So I think I'm going to leave putting this on until I've sorted out the BMS. Now the BMS, I will see if I can buy something but I think um, I might end up making a BMS um, with an Arduino. Um, so I'll do an overall charge. Uh, one of the guys I've been speaking to has recommended charge the whole pack, monitor it with say with an Arduino or something similar and then do um, trickle charging at the end just to, to balance it all 
and the same in reverse. So that's to be sorted out. So I think the best thing to do is actually take all of these off. Uh, they need cleaning up anyway, so it's a good idea to take them off. And at the moment, for the purposes of me getting it running initially, just put these plates on, get it all built up, get it in the car with the fuses and all the switch gear, and then come back to this BMS thing a bit later. So I wanted to get all this built up, but I don't think... I think I could spend a long time messing around with this, so I think it's better not to do that at the moment. So I'm going to rip all these out. <coughs> That allows me to concentrate on just getting these on, nice and simple. So I've just cleaned these up a bit with a very fine emery, not so as not to take too much off. I've cleaned these terminals off a bit. Some of the bolt holes are a bit got a bit of oxidisation or something going on inside. So and what I'll do is clip in some of these, but not all of them. I think I'll leave some gaps for the time being, just so that I don't have the full pack um, just yet. So I can probably go all the way across one end and leave the top side or something. Okay, so none of those are particularly tight just at the moment. Um, just really putting them out of the way. And, uh, and I'll get the cover on. Okay, so I've just gone away and cut these two pieces. So with the two ends I had, which were designed for eight long, I think. Um, I've now got those two, which should give me what I need. And give me the outlets, negative and positive outlets on those two ends. So... Really, I think that's probably it for the battery for now. So, I, w I was hoping to do one part and then finish it on the second part, but I think I need to sort out that BMS, and there's really no point in doing any more on this until uh, until we're further along. So, I'm going to clip those on there. Okay, so. The next thing is just get this fuse on there. So I'm just going to make a bracket that will enable the fuse to mount and for that to be directly connected onto that lug. Okay, so I've just uh, made up this bracket to mount the fuse um, and also this link bar to pick up on the positive terminal and connect to the fuse. Um, so let's just put those parts together. I'm using the this idea of the grub screw and the nut um, to tighten this up just so that, well just try it out really, but if I tighten this with a bolt, a standard bolt, in theory I put some twist on the um, on the bracket and I'll just try this idea of tightening it with a nut. Ideally I would have a bit of sleeving over these tools actually, but uh, for this one, we'll see if it's going to be okay. Just trying to take the strain on the Allen key and tighten the nut up. It's pretty tight. Um, okay, and then this hook shape here is obviously going into the hook part of this fuse, so these Renafluence fuses, they obviously designed to hook into a solid copper bar which is going off to a terminal uh, and then the cable out to wherever. Um, so I'm just using the same idea, picking up on that. So just bolt it on there. Nylocks on the back, so I don't need to over tighten these bolts. 
just hold it in position because being a plastic case. Um, okay, so that's on there, and then tighten that down. Just got a Torx screw head inside these fuses uh, to clamp down onto the metal, and uh, that's it. And that's ready to go in, and that gives me the ability to disconnect if necessary. Okay, so I'm just going to put this into the car now. Um, finish it up. Okay, so the next stage is to get a uh, connection there onto the switch, from the switch down to the back of the car, and then the zero volt line will come up to here, straight onto that terminal, probably some cable relief somewhere along that plate though. <coughs> but it's in and that's a big step forward. Okay, that's about it for now. Uh, there's plenty more videos coming up, so please subscribe and see you next time.